Praise God. Hallelujah. We give God the honor and the glory. I am your host today, Jacqueline King. Welcome to Prophetic Judah International Ministries. Uh, today I will be teaching um, defining the three realms. Amen. Uh, this lesson is for those who believe they are intercessors, but also for those who need to understand the power of prayer. How to release the word of God over your life and the lives of those who contends with you, even in your communities, in your church, in your businesses, your, uh, your homes, wherever you are right now, you can take authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by speaking his word, specifically praying with the word of God and understanding the will of God for your life. Amen. That is so important to understand the will of God for your life. And as I stated um, a while back that the, the scripture that I, I had read was from the book of John. John, uh, I think it was John chapter 3, a third epistle of John. It says, the elder unto the well-beloved Jairus, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. That is the will of God. God wish that you will prosper, amen, and be in health, and your soul will prosper. So th these are the things that you need to begin to understand. What is the will of God for your life? God wants you to prosper, be in health, and thy soul prospers. Because one of the things is, when you begin to understand the power of the word of God you will begin to prosper you will begin to be strengthened within and your soul will get stronger amen and it will be hard for anyone as operating in the realm of darkness to deceive or manipulate you why because you are beginning to understand the will of God for your life amen now when I talk about prosperity I'm not talking about money amen it, what is it for a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul Amen. The love of money is the root of all evil. There's nothing wrong with money, but it's what you do when you get the money. The things that you love, the things that you desire to pursue, that is contrary to the will of God. Our responsibility as a minister or as a Christian or whoever God has called you to be, amen, is to make an impact in this earth as it is in heaven. Amen. We have to make an impact. And when we do that, Things around us begin to prosper, grow, you know, begin to perform in our lives and the lives of many around us. Praise God. So I just want to bring that to you to the forefront so you can begin to understand what God wants you to do. Amen. Because I know God has a lot for me to do. He has so much planned for me. And it's my responsibility to understand what are your plans today, God? You know, just speaking and decreeing his word is good. It's good to speak God's word. It's good to decree and declare his word. But it's good to know what are your plans today, God. What do you desire for me to do today? Amen. So that's my desire right now. I just want to know what, what does he want me to do today, Father? Amen. If you have your Bibles, we're going to just come from um, Matthew chapter 6. Amen. Um. We're going to be coming from, uh, let's see, verse 7. Praise God. Verse 7. Actually, when you get some time, read the entire um, chapter. So you can really begin to understand the power of prayer. Prayer is so essential for all of us. Praise God. And I'm, I'm a firm believer when it comes to prayer. I stated a while ago in one of my groups, uh, on Facebook in a session at work when you begin to understand in accessory begin to understand the power of prayer <laughs> it it won't bother you it won't bother you to release what God has for you into the atmosphere because you will be able to prophesy in accessory opens the door for the prophetic to start to manifest in your life to begin to release Specifically what you hear God say. Amen. So you want to begin to understand that as an intercessor. You can also become your own prophet. And begin to prophesy. Until you see change come. Praise God. So don't limit yourself when it comes down to intercessory. 
So let me pray. <laughs> let me get to praying and ask God to cover this message, saturate this message with the blood of his son Jesus. Amen. There is power in the blood of Jesus. I release the benefits of the blood of Jesus over this lesson. I pray, Lord, that you will open our, our minds, God, that you will give us the understanding, that you will help us to recognize the importance of this subject, that our minds will be renewed over and over and over as the days come i thank you father god that you will increase us you will fill us up god with your spirit of wisdom revelation and knowledge of you i thank you father god that you will begin to open our our eyes i thank you father god that you will teach us to understand what spiritual realm are we living from i thank you father god that you will teach us to understand what spiritual realm we are living from and you will give us clarity on how how to make an impact when we pray when we pray and you empower me you empower the person who is listening to make needed changes in their lives to change their position in their prayer life so they can have more intimacy with you father yeah more intimacy and victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, I'm going to read a little little something out of a book that I'm currently studying. It's called The Joy of, the Interse of, of Intercession. And this is from Benny Johnson. Benny Johnson is from Redding, California. Uh, the ministry is from Redding, California. Amen. Her husband is Bill Johnson and the church is Bethel. I've been following this ministry maybe about three four months now and i'm telling you my life has rapidly just changed just because i hear the word of god and one thing about hearing the word of god you have to be a doer of the word of god amen the word is nothing if you're not doing it amen so you have to apply the word of god in your life but you gotta do it amen you know faith without works is what dead <laughs> so you know we have to ask the Holy Spirit to be our helper, you know, and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us. You know, we, we will be more effective when we allow the Holy Spirit to come into our lives and host the presence of him daily. So when people see us, we don't get the glory. God gets the glory because we are able to minister effectively because we are hosting his presence and allowing his spirit to speak to us. Amen. Because <laughs> you don't want to miss out on that intimacy with God when he speaks to you. Amen. So what does the word realm means? Realm. Okay. So I'm going to read the excerpt from the book. And then we're going to just go into the teaching as the Holy Spirit leads me. Intercessors have the ability to pick up on many things that are going on in the spirit realm and this is so true intercessors have the ability to pick up pick up on many things that are going on in the spirit realm this comes with territory territory the problem is that many remain stuck in a realm that they are not designed to live from. Amen. And we're going to talk about those realms. Uh, the first realm is the visible and physical. Amen. That's where we could touch, where we could feel, and where we could see. And the second realm is angelic and demonic. And the third realm is the glory, God's glory realm. Amen. Where you could begin to recognize God's glory <laughs> and you can release God's glory over that situation. You don't have to fight. The battle belongs to God. All you have to do is release from heaven here on earth God's glory. Let's go there for a minute. Um let's go to Matthew uh verse 10. It says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So we pray that God's kingdom will come. Amen. We pray that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your will here on earth. <laughs> I release your will into my life to inhabit me, God. 
as it is in heaven. Yeah, Lord. Let your kingdom come here on earth. So we allow the glory of God to take dominion and reign over every circumstance in our life. But unfortunately, we're not able to release <laughs> the glory of God in our lives when we are continually stuck in the first realm. And as I stated before, the first realm is visible and physical. We are so distracted and entangled with the affairs of the world and that we are unable to move from that area because our hearts are entangled in the wrong stuff. Amen. So here it says that we are not designed to live um, from that realm. You know, there's a certain realm here on this earth. We're not designed uh, Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Word of God tells us that we're sojourners. Amen? We are just traveling through this earth. We're not here to live. This is not our home. Our home is heaven. So we're, we're, we're here physically and we're here um, spiritually, but our home is in heaven. Praise God. So let me continue to read. It says, here's the deal. Oftentimes, it seems like intercessors get so focused on the negative what the devil is up to and what is he doing that they don't look to what God is doing amen intercessors don't look to what God is doing they're so busy focusing on what the enemy is doing focusing what Satan is up to but not looking at what God is doing and you know what praise God I, I like the idea of what God is doing but also like what God has done. <laughs> God has already gave us the victory through his son Jesus Christ through Calvary. But we don't execute the power of the death, the burial, the resurrection in our lives. We will always be distracted by the negative things that the enemy is doing. I'm not going to uh, be entangled with the affairs of the world. I'd rather be wrapped up entangled with the word of God. So that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Amen. Praise God. It says right here that we must feed ourselves on the works of the Lord. This is what nourishes our intercession. And as intercessors, we have to stay in the word of God. We have to begin to read and study the word of God. And Father says, study to show thy self-approval. Father wants you to study, to show your self-approval, amen, so that you will be able to know how to release the word of God when it's time to release heaven here on earth as it is, um, I will praise God, <laughs> release heaven here on earth, uh, let's go back to that, thy kingdom come, we can release the kingdom of God, amen, we can release his will as it is in heaven here on earth. We'll begin, we'll begin to understand the glory of God and not be distracted by the negativity that's surrounding us daily. Amen? Remember, this is a spiritual warfare. But as intercessors, we need to know how to come out of that first realm and how to move forward into the glory of God. Amen? But re remember, Satan don't want you to pray. He knows your prayer is going to work, so he's going to do whatever he can to hinder you from not praying. But the word of God say pray and pray without ceasing. It says right here where she gives this illustration of junk food. She says junk food does nothing for our bodies. In fact, it does the very opposite of foods that we consider healthy. While there are certain foods that build us up, providing our bodies with nutrients and nourishment, there are also foods that break our bodies down. They hurt rather than help. There is no neutral zone here. It's not like eating junk food does nothing. We would not. It says, hold on, I think I'm reading too fast. Well, anyhow, the whole purpose is she's giving an illustration about junk food. Junk food doesn't do the body good. Let's just break that down real quick. So we know that if we focus on the negative stuff, the negative stuff in our environment, in the, in the first realm, when we can't see looking at what's going on, the wars, the... um. The disagreement with the governments and all this poor leadership around the, un around, around the universe, amen. If we continue to look at that and look at what Satan is doing and not looking at what God is doing, what what's going to happen to us? We begin to get broken down, amen. 
we just start to break 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 down because the enemy is filtering all his junk within our lives and we're not getting healthy we're being destroyed daily by the by the things of this world because we're consuming the wrong stuff so if you want to be a healer you need to study about healing you need to consume the word of god ask the holy spirit to teach you how to release healing into the atmosphere you could be in your kitchen you could be washing dishes and just begin to intercede for healing healing for a certain individual a, a picture may come to your mind you may see a child or a person i don't know it's how the holy spirit may operate but the key thing is is knowing how to release the word of god and if you study the word of god you will know specifically what scriptures to release to allow his glory to raise up out of the first realm past the second realm into heaven declaring his will to be done on earth amen as it is in heaven for that healing to come to pass praise god i'm moving kind of rapidly on this teaching because i really want you guys to understand the power of prayer but as long as you are in the first realm as i stated which is the physical and the visible as long as you are constantly allowing the life around you to distract you from what God is calling you you will never be able oh excuse me I won't say never never is absolute you will not be able to right now to leave that first realm to get to the second realm amen so uh, there's no never in that you will be able to because God has ordained it to be that way especially if you're the one he has called to be an intercessor amen well, actually, not just intercessors. He has called all of us to be intercessors. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So it says right here um, about the spiritual realm. It says that as an intercessor, we, we need to focus on our prayer life. What we feed or what we focus on has everything to do with the three realms we are living out of. That is why I'm devoting these next five days of this topic. Well, I'm not going to devote five days, but <laughs> I only do what the Holy Spirit tells me to do. But to teach people how to pray with the power, amen, and the effectiveness during the session, amen. We need to identify what realm we are living out of. And if we need to make a needed adjustments, well, I can tell you right now for myself, I, I was in the first realm and I was distracted by the affairs of, the, of this world. Now, mind you, it did affect my prayer life and that's why I wasn't getting the results that generally I would have gotten if it hadn't been for me being stuck in the first realm. So I had to learn, how do I get past this first realm to my prayer life amen so this is why I, I feel like it's important for people to understand where are you praying from you know because father wants you to pray but where are you praying from are you praying from what you see are you praying from what you hear in the natural amen because we have to understand as intercessors that we pick up on a lot of stuff in the spirit realm and we have to be careful what we release from that area we have to make sure that we're not speaking the wrong stuff you know that we're not speaking what the enemy wants us to speak we have to make sure we are releasing according to the will of God according to his living testament which is his son christ jesus we have to make sure that the word of god is being birthed out of our mouth daily by making positive declarations you know not saying i'm gonna curse this and i'm gonna do this no 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 we are to be joyful about intercessory not miserable we have to be happy we have to declare god's joy and his glory over a lot of circumstances in our lives so we have to begin to understand what is it that God wants us to do as an intercessor and we need to make sure that we're not focusing on the wrong stuff 
so that when we begin to pray, we will pray according to God's will and not the will of the enemy. Because when we say, oh, the devil is this, the devil is that, oh, Satan, I this, I do this to you and I do that. You, you got to understand, none of these things can manifest if, you, if you're operating from the first realm. You have to begin to allow the Holy Spirit to teach you how to intercede beyond the first realm. Amen. So here she's saying right here, as I mentioned at the beginning, there are many intercessors who get stuck living out of the demonic realm where they end up spending the majority of their focus on the enemy and his tragedies. And now you see that a lot. You, you see it and you hear it a lot where people are so focused on the enemy and focus on his tragedies, you know. You, you want to know the strategic plans of the devil? I don't want to know the strategic plans of the devil. The thing is, Satan don't mind me knowing the strategic plans that he has out there. Because as long as I'm focused on him, I'm not focusing on the power of the Holy Spirit and how he could change his strategic plans through my prayer, prayer and fasting. Amen. So when we uh, just focus on the demonic realm, you know, we're not living a balanced lifestyle. It's just like what my apostle says, Apostle Ivory Hopkins. Uh, amen. You can find him on Facebook. Apostle Ivory Hopkins, he says, he teaches from a balance. You know, everything is not about the demonic amen everything is not about the devil we have to have a balanced lifestyle but when you always meet somebody and they're always talking about witchcraft they're always talking about uh spirits dead spirits uh talking about just all this other stuff you know it makes you wonder does this person get any real rest in god they can't be resting in god because god said enter into my rest god specifically tells us that when we begin to in the seed from his will we will be able to enter into his rest have a sound mind huh we don't have to operate from the spirit of fear but when you always hear people saying the devil's doing this the devil's doing that and they're always talking about his strategies and talking about how he's going to do this and do that uh-uh that ain't god honey that is not god God is love, peace, joy, and a sound mind. Amen. God is not a God of intimidation, a God of fear. Amen. It's the Bible specifically tell us that the knowledge of God is the beginning, you know, the beginning of fear or knowledge of God. I can't remember how the scripture goes, but it talks about when you have that knowledge, you begin to reference God. It's just like when, when I was a little girl, you know, my dad used to come home. I knew when my dad was in the house before he even called my name. Why? Because of his presence. Amen. So I reverence God. Uh, my father, my daddy, amen, my earthly father, out of respect, not fear, like I'm trembling and all that, but it was out of respect. And that's the same thing it is with our heavenly father in earth. Amen. So it says right here, the only reason the enemy's strategies are revealed to us are so that we can break them and release God's, hold on, excuse me. It says right here, the only reason the enemy's strategies are revealed to us are so we can break them and release God's supernatural, supernatural solution over them. By focusing all of our attention on the enemy, we are actually agreeing with his plans and his strategies. And this agreement is exactly how we give him power. Stop agreeing with Satan. You are an intercessor. You are called to release the supernatural power of God over the strategies of Satan. Not to agree with what he's doing. We don't align ourselves with what the enemy is doing. We align ourselves with the word of God. We speak God's word. We call those things that are not as though they were. Amen. We begin to say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We begin to say, God, give us this day our daily bread. For God is the one who makes provisions for us. Satan is the one that brings poverty into the lives of many. And we as intercessors have to make an impact by speaking the word of God, releasing God's word, his sovereignty over the spirit of poverty, over those who are bogged down with debts and responsibility releasing his glory so these people will begin to walk in the spirit of prosperity of his knowledge of his wisdom and understanding because there's so much benefits in christ jesus 
but we're missing out on the benefits of Christ Jesus because we're so busy focusing on the strategies of the enemy. And I can tell you, I was that person. I was that person. If you go on my page and look at my notes, uh, prophetic utterance uh, on Facebook, if you go there and you look, you will see, if you look at my old prayer notes, you will see I was living out of that realm. I was living from the first realm. I was looking at the natural and I was looking at the physical. Amen? Because I didn't see the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven. I didn't see the will of the Father. I was busy speaking the things that the enemy wanted me to birth out of my mouth. That brought a lot of detriment to me spiritually. And that's how we promote spiritual warfare in our life. The word of God said this battle does not belong to us. The battle belongs to the Lord. The word of God specifically tells us that God is minding strong and pulling down strongholds. He says that our weapons of warfare are not carnal. So when we begin to speak our carnality from the first realm, we are not demolishing the works of Satan. If anything, we are empowering him to demolish the works of God here on earth. Amen? Here on earth. So we are strategically out of the will of God. So we need to get back into the will of God. And the way we get back into the will of God is to begin to understand where are we? Are we in the first realm? Are we in the second realm? Are we in the, in, in the third realm? Where are we as intercessors? And this is what this teaching is all about. Where are we as intercessors? Where are we releasing from? And we don't want to be like that. Amen. I don't want to be like that. I want to be aware of what realm am I operating from? Where am I living from in my spiritual life? I want to know what spiritual realm have I allowed to have an impact in my life and the lives of others who depends on me to pray for them. I want to know how to study God's word effectively. So when it's time to go into intercessory and worship, mm, because I'm a worshiper for one thing, I love to worship. And when the spirit of the Lord comes upon me, I begin to release in my heavenly language. Amen. And for those who may not know what heavenly language is, it's speaking in tongues. And God will ignite me and I will begin to release. And I'm not praying from my comprehension. I'm praying from my inner spirit. So I'm not going to allow the enemy to distract me saying, well, you need somebody to interpret what you're praying in, in your heavenly language. I don't need an interpreter. I'm aligning myself with the word of God and I'm releasing into the atmosphere. I'm releasing, amen, because I'm breaking and demolishing the powers of darkness over certain individuals' lives. And that's the will of God for me here on earth as it is in heaven. So we're going to continue to teach on this, amen. Um teach on this level uh to understand what realm so uh maybe tomorrow i will teach on the first realm so you can understand what that is uh put more um light on that then we're going to talk on the second demonic realm which is angelic activity and demonic activity Ah. Uh, You'll be amazed when you begin to release negative words over your life. You allow demonic activity to come into your life and the lives of others. So that's why it's so important to know where we're operating from. And so with that saying, <laughs> I will be back again. And then when we get to understand this, then we'll begin to release God's glory. Amen. Don't you want to know God's glory? Don't you want to know where you're operating from? Don't you want to have healing? Huh? Have deliverance, total deliverance, complete deliverance. Have a balanced lifestyle, just like what Apostle Ivory Hopkins say. Have a balanced lifestyle, releasing with balanced teaching. So people don't be bounded up with wrong teaching, wrong prayers. Amen. So come back, visit me again. I will post this lesson in my group, Intercessors at Work. For them, this lesson is ready for them so they can begin to understand why they're in this program, why they're in this group. And I may start a prayer line too. So I'm just doing what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do. So I'm going to obey Him and Him only. In Christ Jesus' name, may you have a blessed day. Amen. Bye.